Welcome back to Let's Build a Tetris Like. Um, I actually intended to make shorter videos with fewer things done in them, but that kind of went out the window. Uh, <laughs> I'll still try and do that going forward, but this one will still be a little bit longer. All right, so first things first, uh, what I did was I created a mesh for what I'm calling the scanner. Uh, the scanner is going to be something that moves up and down and clears the lines as it senses them. So I went into Blender and I just made a simple uh, 10 by 10. Well, the inside is 10 by 10, and then there is a one block wide um, perimeter around it. Uh, so I went into Blender and I made this and I gave it just like a generic, uh, just a colors texture um, because what I wanted to do was make it look like glass. And I did know that there was a glass texture in Unreal Engine that comes with it. So after I created it, I imported the mesh. Um, then I created an actor in C++. I created a blueprint based on that actor which allowed me, uh, well, that C++, it had a mesh and a sensor box, a uh, collision volume. Uh, so let's go look at the line scanner. All right, so here is the box component for the collision. Here's the static mesh. And then below that, I just have some game data. This is mostly for debugging purposes. I just wanted to be able to view it. Um, and just kind of like for things like scan speed, uh, you want to expose it to blueprints so that you can change it like on the fly and kind of tweak the speed values, that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's all that game data is. But the important thing is, is I created the C++. I instanced it over here so that it would show up in um, the editor window. Once that was all done, I compiled it, came over here, I created my blueprint based on that C++ class, and I set the mesh that I created. I searched for the glass material instance, and I assigned that here, so that gave it the glass that I wanted to look for. And then the block sensor, I set it up so that it will be, uh, let me see here, it's 500 by 500, by 10 so it measures from the middle so it's 500 on either side equally in a total of 1000 um, which will be the shape uh, the maximum width that a slice can be in both directions and then I gave it a 10 depth um, because it doesn't really need to be the whole thing um, plus I don't want um, it to be able to scan at two different levels at the same time I wanted to clear them one at a time um, and then just have like a little animation of it going up and down and deleting them. Uh, but that's all I did to create this scanner actor. And it's not like super complicated until we get into the line clearing itself. So uh, that covers the scanner mesh. Um, to, in order to animate this, um, I needed, created a scan function all right now this is going to run and tick it's up here it takes in delta time it's right here and all this is doing is it's interpolating the vector that it's at um so get actor location and then it's trying to send it down 1000 uh units from where it uh, starts from which is at 2100 um and then uh, once it reaches a thousand, it sets scanning to false. If it's no longer scanning, it goes backwards. It interprets the location that it's at back up to the 2100 um, and then sets scanning to true. Uh, this is gonna change. Ultimately, I just wanted this to move up and down so that I could test it, um, move up and down constantly so that I could test it. Uh, but in the end, I want the active play area to go through all 10 slices before it scans, and then it'll scan once. Um, 
So this scanning will probably stay false. And then there will be a function in the player board that I tell it to scan. And then it'll scan one more time, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't th I don't think it'll really matter for performance in a game this small, but on mobile it might. Uh, it's not really performance reasons that I want to break it up like that, but it's just kind of like a de design decision. Um, especially in, in your first run through the cube, you go through 10 slices, you're not going to be able to clear it until you get through all 10 slices anyway. Uh, all right, so that covers the scanning functionality. All that does is make it go up and down. And what does that look like? We'll go here, uh, let's eject. And that's it. So it'll move up and down. As I enter Tetraminos in here, uh, they'll move up and then the scanner will go through um, and clear lines if it sees any that need cleared. All right, and then this will, as normal, will keep moving forward and I can still enter Tetra Minnows. All right, and then the other thing I wanted to show while this is going is some of those debugging things that I was talking about. Right here, scanned blocks, it's talking about how many blocks it's scanning at any given point. So it's gonna go through, um, you know what? You know, 10, 10 units might be too much for this, or I should move it down to the middle because it looks like it's briefly getting more blocks because I think there's only one unit or maybe two units between the collision of each box. So that could cause bugs while I'm scanning. Well, I guess not really bugs, but it would clear more than one line at once which is not what I wanted. Um, but yeah, so for debugging purposes, I have this scan blocks down here and it just tells me how many are there. Here I can change the speed, go up and down, check it out. That's kind of how I adjusted everything to get this scan right now. All right, and let's move back. So the last thing is clearing lines. Now this ended up being a little more complicated than I expected it to be. I guess complicated isn't the right word. I just wasn't quite sure what to use for it. So I did find this component suite multi by channel and it gives you a whole bunch of hit results, uh, but you have to like give it a start and an end and then it sweeps through. You have to give it an F quat. Uh, actually, I think there are some that, um, take a, a rotator, but they're slightly less performant. Uh, again, I don't think it would really matter in this. Um, and then it takes a trace channel, uh, which is all well and good. But in the end, I ended up finding this. Uh, it's a member of you primitive component and you get all overlapping actors. And I'm like, all right, well, that sounds kind of like what I need. So you pass in a T array of actors, uh, of actor pointers, um, and what class you're looking for. And in this case, I'm scanning for blocks. So I send in a T subclass of a block base, and then it knows that's only looking for blocks. So that's great. And then I set the scan blocks. This is that variable that I was showing in there. It I outputs the number, um, so it knows. Now, Eventually, this is going to be out actors num equals equals 100 because that'll mean that there are is an entire full slice that needs cleared. Uh, but for testing purposes, I just made it greater than or equal to 10 so that I could see it clearing blocks and making sure that it was working. And it's a good thing I did that because I found out that once you destroy a block, it doesn't automatically remove it from the blocks in play T array that is on the player pawn. Um, so what I had to do was I had to get the player pawn by going to U gameplay statics. I'm getting player zero. It just needed a world context object to make sure that you're in the proper world. Then I had to cast it to a player board in order to get access to the blocks in play. Then I loop through all of the actors. So these come out as actors, uh, a T set 
of actors actually uh which made it a little more difficult to work with but um it didn't really matter now this i do know that casting is a bit of a hit on performance uh but i think in this case even though it's in a for loop i don't think it's going to hurt things too much um i don't know i i could be wrong about that i guess i'll i'll see when i test it on mobile but in order to remove it from the blocks in play i had to cast it to a block base first uh there is a remove all function of t t arrays but when i passed in the t set of actors that is output by um get overlapping actors it blew up it didn't like that it compiled but it when i tried to run it it would just die um because this uh this is a t array of blocks and i'm not aware of a way to mass cast an entire block of t arrays it may be possible but i didn't look for it so uh ultimately i just decided you know what screw it we'll do a cast in a for loop <laughs> uh not the most performant thing in the world but it got the job done so that removes it from the t array of blocks in play and then after that's done i can destroy it and it'll be gone for good uh now what does this look like so let's hop back over here uh make sure things compiled I am going to have to refactor this and uh, take a lot of this out of tick. I'm going to need another function to like clear the actors and stuff, but I was just, you know, testing. So I did it directly in tick. All right. So we start playing. Of course, we're not going to get 10. This one will. All right, so let's eject. So when that goes up, it should get 10 and then it should clear another line. Yeah, <laughs> so there we go. Um, it looks like it cleared two lines and I think that's because of this issue right here. Uh, sensor block. So it won't matter where this is. So you know what I need to change is actually the blueprints, block base, full blueprint editor. Let's shrink the size of the collision. So yeah, so it'll be two in every direction that there's a space. And I need it to be at least 10. Um, so let's make this, uh, 44 by 44 by 44. So then that'll give me one line of buffer. I should fix the problem. But it's going to clear both those lines anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, sh that should fix the problem. But also part of the issue too is that it's sensing all the lines at once. And since I'm only deleting if there's more than 10, it can be like five on this line and five on this line and it'll still delete it. So that might be a big part of the issue as well. But yeah, I don't want to clean it clearing more than one line all right so we got the animation and we're clearing the planes so that means this before i forget is going to have to change to equals equals 100 and i think we're good so that'll wrap it up for this video um i hope it wasn't too much information all at once i am going to try and do shorter videos and cover shorter um amounts of content in each video in the future but i'm still kind of you know getting in the rhythm of this hope you enjoyed it i'll see you next time